The courthouse clock said six o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get this meeting of the, the September meeting of the Blunt County Board of Zoning Appeals to order. Roger, if you call the roll, please. Larry Chesney? Here. Bruce Tamrose absent. Stan Hedrick? Here. Ralph Walker? Here. Mr. King? Here. If there's no discussion, uh, is there a motion to approve last month's meeting? So Minutes? Much. Everybody in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, tonight we've got one special exception and one variance and uh, we'll try to move this variance up to the first uh, the beginning of the agenda to move things along a little quicker uh, this variance request is from the front building setback requirements for a residential utility structure at 2730 rambling road the properties identified on tax map uh, I put C on in your memo, but it's actually control map D, but it's control map 78 D group B parcel 11 and is zoned S suburbanizing. The required setback is 30 feet. The applicant did obtain a building permit for the utility shed, but when determining the setback structure measure, measurement was taken from the edge of the road. For this particular property, the road right of way is about 30 feet from the edge of the pavement. And I took a, a, another measurement. If you've got the, remember the photograph that I sent you guys that had some GIS overlaid property lines. Now those aren't 100% accurate, but usually they're within a foot or so. And that come out to be 29 feet. Uh, this is a boulevard entrance to the subdivision. It's got 120 foot right of way, which is humongous. At this time, it is still unclear how much the variance needs to be. I went and took the measurements today and the best that I can determine, they're about two feet inside their property. Uh, the claimed hardship is that the slope of the property limits the placement of the structure to this, to this area of the property and the property does have the, the fairly steep slope from front to the back. And then of course the uh, the extra large, for lack of a better term, right of way uh, takes up a large portion of the yard to take in that boulevard entrance for the subdivision. I have had uh, several phone calls from the community and once they realized that what the variance was for, their comments were, well, they didn't have a problem with that. Is there anyone here in favor of this variance who would like to speak? Is there anyone in opposition? Hearing none, we'll open up the floor for discussion on the board. The shed is the one that leads onto the driveway. That's it. So, and, and the exception that you're asking for is from the side of the shed to the road. Correct. And you just said that it's on their property two feet, which means they're 100 feet off the road? Oh, no, no, no. The right of way is 120 feet, but. Uh, all that right away is not on them. The, the shed is 32 feet off of the edge of the pavement. But that right of way goes deep into their property. You know, most right of ways are 50 feet and will go six or eight feet in onto your property. Well, this one goes 29 feet back on, onto, their, on, onto that lot. Right. Yeah, and that's that's what they were stating that that's the way that lot lays and how it's laid out. I mean, it it's a big lot, but a lot of it's sloping down to. Uh, What's this, what, what are these units behind the house? Here? Behind the house. The circle is an above ground pool that sits down. Behind the shed. Yeah. Okay. So that's their all those property back there. There's no issue behind the house. Is there any other discussion? Motion to Is there a second? Larry Chesney? Yes. Stan Hendrick? Yes. 
Rob Walker? Yes. Brian King? Yes. Motion approved. Okay. Okay. Good evening. <laughs> Next okay. item tonight is a special exception on Keeble Road. This is the cell tower that came to us and, and they revised, and I, I hope all you guys got the, the PDF that I sent you of the revised site plan. What they've done is they've moved the location and dropped the tower. They moved the location over northeast uh, to about directly in front of the barn and they moved it a little bit forward down from the barn uh, the best I can see they moved it about 110 feet from the from the overall from the back property line it was 660 from the corner of the subdivision out 770 uh, that location is in a wooded area uh, there was negotiations between the cell tower company and the homeowners association the homeowners association uh, had uh, given them some options and the cell tower company was agreeable to one of the options i think if it i, I tried to attach emails to to all you guys and and they settled on option three and um, that fell through with the property owner not wanting it located there and this is one that the cell tower company came up with uh, but it wasn't one of the options that the homeowner association was agreeable to um, but this is their request coming before us it does meet the uh, separation and setback distance because the property that directly abuts it is is a farm agriculturally used area as well so it's got to be the 75 feet of the tower height which it, it is 75 percent of the tower height and it's the the new proposed tower is 150 versus the 190. is that all you got right yes is anyone here in favor of this special exception who would like to speak is that may be them there <laughs> are you in favor of this special exception with the cell tower <laughs> We're just now going over. Is there anything you'd like to tell us about it? Um, certainly. Sorry, I'm not. That's all right. Um, basically, we just have, for the record, um, your 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 name. I'm sorry, David Chisholm, um, representing Verizon. We had um, originally uh, a few locations that were proposed, and uh, the HOA had come back and given three alternate locations, but we had to get them approved with the uh, engineering team. So they did approve one. Um, the HOA didn't care for that location, but we did find another location over near the tree line that seems to serve the engineering purposes and also that it kind of hides the tower a little bit more in the tree line so you can't see it as directly from the homes that are in that neighborhood. And so Verizon also agreed to lower the tower 50 feet and to paint it initially uh, to kind of disguise it. So I think it's a good spot. It works for engineering and I think it's uh, pretty well hidden from the homes. Okay. Um, we might have some more questions for you here in Great. a little bit. <laughs> Is there anyone in opposition who would like to speak? Hi, I'm Charlie Cutler. I represent the Smoky Hills Homeowners Association. Could you tell us your name again, sir? Charlie Cutler. Right. C-U-T-L-E-R, if you want to. Speak. I think Roger knows how to spell it. <laughs> uh, originally, we started negotiations with Verizon, and uh, we gave them different options, and one of the options was, which Roger mentioned to you, was option three, which was located uh, further away from the development, bay, approximately halfway between Mr. McCarter's house and Smoky Hills homes that will be built on lot 17. Uh, they agreed to that. They said all met all of their engineering requirements. They also agreed to a lower to 150 feet. Uh, 
they agreed to paint the tower you know, blue gray so it would blend in from the skyline when you looked at it. Um, Larry Perry has seen that done in other areas and said it really doesn't make them stand out as much as one of these fake trees kind of things. And uh, it was just a way that when you looked up at it, it sort of blended in with the sky. Uh, they, they eventually said, well, they want the Homeowners Association to pay for painting, repainting that when it comes up. And we told them, no way. You know, that's your maintenance thing. Uh, so as it stands right now, to my understanding, and I, did, I tried to go through all of that. I don't know if the painting is in there now or not. That, the, no, this is just uh, SOP yeah. information on it, yeah. Uh, but uh, the painting makes sense to us as a general rule for the county to make them not stand out so much for everybody to look at. Uh, it seems like a small item, but small items add up to a lot of people when you look at it. Uh, if you were looking at it from a distance, you may not even know it's there. Uh, from the pictures I saw, I found pictures on the internet that were done in Massachusetts where they, sh they painted the towers. And you looked at the picture when it was unpainted and painted, it was like a night and day difference. Uh, as far as the distance from the development, uh, we're not happy where they put it. We're happy they put it up on the tree line where they should, probably should have put it in the first place. Uh, the property owner, according to what I've gotten from Chris Kinchin, uh, is the fact is that the property owner uh, didn't want it in option three because it was in a farming land. But if you go back and look at the original plan, it was right in the middle of the farming land. You know, it didn't make sense to me, you know, you were using pasture and it's just pasture for cattle. And you look at the pasture and there's pasture there and it's pasture, <laughs> pasture over here. You know, what's the difference? Well, the only difference is, it seems like, is he doesn't want it near his house. We don't want it near our house. We would like to still see it move 200 feet to line up with uh, option three that we had on the original agreement. Um, you know, it's just been a, a very painful process dealing with them. Uh, when we started out, uh, I asked Chris Kinchin if there was a local person that would talk to us. He said no, uh, that the only person was in Charlotte that we could talk to. Uh, she said she was in Florida and would make no effort to come up here to meet with us. So all of our conversations with them were done over email. Uh, to me, that's not the way to do business, but that's, that's the way I never did business that way. But anyway, uh, we'd like you to insist that they paint the tower and to move it 200 feet down. It's still in the tree line. It doesn't affect the farmland. Uh, it affects the elevation a little bit on the height of the tower, but if it was good in option three, it's good in this location too because the elevation doesn't change. In fact, as it goes up a couple of feet. Uh, so that's our point. Any questions? And I'd like to thank you, gentlemen, for a lot, giving us time to get as far as we did and learn more about these soil towers so we have a better understanding from the last meeting we had. You're quite welcome. Thank you. Is there anyone else in favor of this special exception, or um, I'm sorry, in opposition? Um, well, this is one of our homeowners we, too, so. I figured he might be with you. But <laughs> before we get any further, Mr. Chisholm, have you all addressed the painting of the cell tower? <clears throat> Um, Verizon is agreeable to paint the tower initially, but it's something that uh, we don't ever do uh, unless it's a special request like this. So it's very costly. Uh, they will paint it initially, but uh, not agree to the repaintings in the future if and when needed. And obviously all paint wears at some point, it will be needed, but it is rather expensive. Um, 
I could also, uh, if I could respond to a couple of comments that he made as well. Okay. The reason that we are not able to go with option three is actually not a Verizon call. Uh, the landowner simply does not want it out there. He's had the land in his uh, family for generations, and um, he wants the land to remain in a layout where he can either develop it or continue to farm it um, easily. His complaint is with option three on your map there, is it's out in the middle of his area that he is farming, which will create a problem if he wants to uh, you know, farm around that. Um, if he develops it, then instead of the tower being up against the existing tree line, it will be right in the middle of uh, you know, a future neighborhood if he were to subdivide it like that. So that's why um, he doesn't want it there. Uh, it's, it's not necessarily a, a Verizon thing. The, um, the alternate location that uh, the HOA had proposed down the tree line, which was about 200 feet further away from the neighborhood, I believe, the elevation drops off a little bit. And in addition, moreover, the landowner doesn't want it there either. The location that we have there proposed for the Verizon proposed location is as far southwest as he wants to move the tower because he does want to keep that property at that far end for future use. So those were not decisions that uh, we made or rejected the HOA. Those were actually his reasonings. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll open up the floor for discussion on the board. I have a question about the painting. Yes. <clears throat> if, if they had not requested the tower be painted, is it painted anyway, or is it galvanized? Or is it it is galvanized, that's right. Um, for a couple of reasons, uh, because of the cost and because of the maintenance, uh, they are galvanized poles, which are typically used. And since it is below 200 feet, uh, the FAA doesn't require any lighting or painting. So how long does that galvanized surface last you? It's, it is permanent. I mean, it's this. So you never have to go in there and touch it up? And we do it, not. It's a one-time done deal? That's correct, for the life of the site. Okay, thank you. If you painted it, what would you paint it with? Just regular paint? It would be, you know, a heavy-duty industrial type of paint. You don't powder coat them or nothing like that? I'm sorry? You don't powder coat them or nothing like that? No, no, not powder coated. How long, how long was paint expected to last? You know, I couldn't give you an accurate answer. I, I would assume that any exterior surface like a, a billboard or something where they do paint the metal, probably, I'm guessing, you know, five or ten years. That, that's just a guess. I really don't know. If you put a tree-looking thing up there camouflaged, you would be expected to keep it in a camouflaged look. Uh, why couldn't you keep the tower in a painted look? Which is why we don't like to do the trees there. Well, They're astronomically expensive, yes, um, and, I, and, they, and they don't even look good. <laughs> I understand that, but, but you can be required to do it. Uh, if so we had... If, if you had that option, would it not be better to paint it? Would it would be to keep a tree in tree-looking shape? It's definitely less costly than the tree, but it is definitely a lot more costly than no paint at all, which is the standard practice. <clears throat> if you painted it and they agreed to repaint it. How much are they looking at every five to ten years? Again, I don't know what it costs to paint these. I'm going to estimate that it might cost two or three thousand dollars. So what they've turned down is an option to paint it and pay two to three thousand dollars every five to ten years. Yes, sir. So the location where you this last proposal, the homeowners can live with that? It's certainly not what we'd like to see. Um, if you look at any anything in property when you're looking at these things, there should be both parties should be equally hurt, you know, and be dealt with.
would be in the thing, and, and with all the setback requirements that always already exist for new homes being built in that area, it would be very painful to do. There would be a lot of property that wouldn't be used for the cell tower, just because the cell tower is there, and you've got enough setback, you know, 75% of the tower height and everything else, you're going to chew up a lot of that property anyway. So. Moving it should be no cost for Verizon because it's, the road becomes shorter. They don't have to develop the road as much. As far as development of the property, there's a couple extra trees they would have to cut down to get their 100 by 100 um, building site. Um, so we would like to see it move to 200 feet. Split the pain between the property owner and our development. But moving it farther is a lower altitude. Is that what you said? It, um, it, 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 it gradually slopes down farther. Is that what you said? That's saying? correct. It is a slightly lower elevation, but again, it's it's the landowner uh, that does not want it moved further down. That is a, a point on his property where he doesn't want to go any further. Southwest. Okay. Now, the benefit of, of the new proposed location, as I mentioned before, um, is actually, and I believe that it is going to be more aesthetically pleasing than uh, location number three um, that the HOA proposed because that would have put it out in the middle of that pasture where you would have had a line of sight view from the neighborhood of that tower out in that field. Where we're proposing it, we've taking it all the way up against the tree line. It actually sits near a, a barn. Uh, the trees actually come out just a little bit from the line of sight of the neighborhood. And actually, most of the houses, from what I can tell, will not even have a line of sight view. They'll be behind the trees. The ones further east will be able to see it, but again, it will be tucked in there. Uh, it, really, it's an aesthetic advantage. Is Verizon the only carrier on this tower? I'm sorry? Is Verizon the only carrier on this tower? Uh, currently, they will be, but it will be constructed. Well, so here's another caveat. When we wanted to construct it at 190 feet, we would have been able to construct it with three additional carriers that could go on there at a later date. Um, because we're lowering it 50 feet um, to help with the HOA's uh, requests, we won't be able to get three additional carriers on there. It, that is a negative for will other you, carriers in the will future. Will you get one or two, do you think? Or I haven't seen the engineering on that specifically. I'm sure we could get one more. Maybe they can help cover the cost of repainting it down the road. Yeah. And see, the problem is when we lower it from 190 to 150, then that puts us at the 150 location but then the next carrier, when they come in, they're going to be down at 140, 130. Pretty soon, it's too low for them to even want to use it. Yeah. And so then they'll seek to build another tower. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from the original, we have gone to a different, correct? Yes. Yes. All right. So now, is it the paint is the option? Or is, is, that, is that the angst, the painting? But it's not an option with the property owner to do that. <laughs> and all, all the locations you're talking about meet our setback requirements. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I admire Verizon for even trying to work because 
technically, they meet they've our met their specifications. So, uh, you know, I think you, if you got them to reduce the height, and you done a good deal there, but maybe as far as you need to push. Just to make sure, Roger, <clears throat> the proposal meets all of our known requirements. Yes. And if we reject it, then we're open for a lawsuit. Could be. I mean, if you reject it, you would have to base it on evidence presented here that it does not meet our requirements. Okay. <clears throat> I'm, I'm a painting again. Uh, I know you don't want to do it, but that ain't a big deal, is it? Verizon, as a company, limits the amount of ongoing maintenance on all their facilities. Well, does Verizon own a tower, or do you have an independent guy that owns a tower and just leases it to Verizon? Verizon will own the tower. Is that the normal procedure nowadays to own your own towers or just rent space on someone else's? It depends on the carrier. Uh, Verizon does own a lot of theirs. Um, there are other tower companies that you're aware of, uh, American Tower, SBA, that construct these and then lease them to the carriers. Verizon probably owns more of their own towers than the other carriers. Uh, for example, US Cellular does not like to own, uh, Sprint typically does not like to own. It just varies a little bit. When you do, do these towers, you lease the lease the property, and if I could, how, how long how long are land leases good for? How long do you expect to use that tower? Well, we would hope to use this tower for at least uh, 20, 25 years. So that's a normal lease. Yes, time? the the lease is renewable in five year increments. Uh, they are all five years uh, plus four more five year extension options. In, in all the delta number of Verizon Towers, do they paint any of them? Only in very special exceptions. If, if there were some type of uh, facility that could not deal with uh, tower lighting and we were above 200 feet, then the FAA requires it to be marked for air traffic, and if, um, for example, if there were an observatory nearby and they would not accept the lighting on the tower, then we might have to paint one, some special case like that. Generally speaking, 99 point something percent of these towers are never painted. Okay. So do the property owners just not want a tower that looks like a tree? You don't, you, you don't want a tree looking tower? Not no, 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 50 plus feet, really, no. I think the tree would work. If insisting on a tree would encourage them to paint the tower, then the yeah, would insist on a tree. So if they wouldn't paint the tower, you'd rather have a tree? Absolutely. Okay, and that's what I'm getting at. Would you rather have a tree or paint the tower? We'd rather not paint the tower. I know, but would you rather have a tree? <laughs> The um, option that we are choosing right now is to paint the tower, just not to repaint the tower. Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> but would you rather maintain a tree or maintain the paint? We'd rather maintain paint than okay. build a tree. <laughs> just to, to keep us legal, I don't think we can make it a decision that would require a, a community to maintain something that's not theirs. You know what I mean? All we can ascertain, if I understand this correctly, is whether they meet the requirements for our codes. Correct. Now, we, there, there is provision in there that we can require them to do things to lessen the visual impact, like painting or camouflaging and things like that. So you do have that power. Um, but it, we don't have any authority to require a third party to take responsibility of maintenance. 
Would be would Verizon be totally against repainting the tower every ten years? Surely that the paint would last almost that long. Hopefully the first painting. I know what my Verizon bill is. <laughs> they can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're saying? <laughs> I, I know what my Verizon bill is. Say. <laughs> my direction on this one is that Verizon is dead set against uh, continuing maintenance for painting the tower after the initial paint. What happens if you had a, a windstorm and it come and it bent the tower sideways? Would you maintain that? Yes. Okay. I, I suppose the way that we're looking at it is we are literally painting ourselves into a corner. Not uh, really. We're creating a maintenance issue, uh, a maintenance requirement that shouldn't have to be there. So we are setting ourselves up for continued expense. And You're cost. establishing a precedence, perhaps. I'm sorry, I apologize? You would perhaps be establishing a precedence. That's correct, yes. That's, that's the preferred way of not setting a precedence, but you do maintain towers, especially if it looks like a tree. Yes, we certainly do maintain all of our towers. What we have, and, and as the gentleman just said, setting a precedence, we have had communities where we have done one favor, if you will, and it became a requirement uh, for every tower that was constructed in an area became very costly, very expensive, uh, a lot of man hours, a lot of materials, and that is one problem. If we paint this one, then we'll have to paint the next one and, and the next one. And Roger, you remember who done the tower, or who has the tower in Townsend? Is it, is the, the, is it an independent? The tree or the painted the tree, one? The tree. Is this an independent tower? I can't remember. Um, I think it was the independent tower. So independence and Verizon shouldn't be treated different. Should not be treated differently, I agree. And I think uh, the one that was painted over, over on Red Hall, the one that I think blends in better than any of them, was, my memory served me correct, I think it was a U.S. cellular tower. What is interesting is, I don't know if you've ever seen one of these towers painted blue-gray. In my opinion, they actually stand out more than galvanized steel um, against a tree line. Because you won't be looking at the tower against the skyline, it'll be a tree line. So you'll have a, a blue-gray pole in front of, you know, trees. Whereas when you have the galvanized steel, it's just, it's sort of, it's not chrome reflective, but it just sort of gathers the light from the surrounding materials. Well, another thing, if you have a blue-gray paint and you have oxidized galvanized after the end of a year, probably ain't a whole lot of difference, right? Uh, a, a, a real brilliant, bright, new galvanized tower compared to one that's a year old, the year old one would look a lot. Mm hmm Yes. Oh. Any other discussion from the board? I, I, I personally, uh, I think this is the first time we've ever had a, a tower request come before the BZA where the company has taken the time to work with uh, the people against the tower uh, and try to come up with some consensus. So uh, and they, have made they have made concessions. So concessions. I thought that's good. And they yeah. No other discussion. Chair, entertain a motion. Second. Got a motion to approve the revised site plan by Larry and Bruce second.
Larry Chesney? Yes. Bruce Damro? Yes. Stan Hedrick? Rob Walker? Yes. Ryan King? Yes. Bye. Hope that's something everybody can live with. <laughs> I have no further business on the agenda. I heard the tire squealing out there. Is there a motion to adjourn? So much. She asked me to look at that for two years. She was thinking media like this. Okay. All right. Thank you. You have a good day.